Alright everybody, we are here at the Bucktail Station and today I'm going to be telling you about my most productive bucktail of 2021. It's made by Larry Welcome of North Bar Tackle. I've never found these anywhere. Uh, I was lucky enough to be gifted a few of, of them by him. So if you do happen to come across these, I would highly recommend scooping them up because they caught lots of fish when none, none of my other bucktails were catching. So um, it's a little torn up as you can see. A lot of worn out yellow bucktail, feathers are beat. Um, so I started slicing. Slicing the threads. But I'm trying to be careful about it because I want to see exactly how he built it. And I'm pretty sure I have a good idea of how he did it. And it's not how I typically tie. But I might have to make an adjustment on how I tie because this worked extremely well. It's also glued down real well. Alright. What do we got? What do we got? I'm trying to get to the bottom and see how he tied in these feathers. Alright. So the feathers are the first thing he tied on. So that's what we're gonna do too. And he tied them up right behind the head. The actual jig head. It's like the actual lead. All right, hopefully you guys can see this all right. It's my first time using the head strap for the GoPro, so get it on there and get started. Just gonna slice off the rest of that uh, glue and stuff. There were some sweet eyes on this, but as you can see, they were taken off like the feathers in the hair. All right. There's the material. White bucktail, chartreuse feathers, yellow, yellow bucktail, and chartreuse thread. So I'm going to put my own little spin on it because I'm lazy and I don't want to get any yellow. I have some kind of cream colored bucktail here. It's real pretty, real fine, really long too. That is like outstanding bucktail. See that? Really long. So we'll find some shorter fibers towards the top. I'll probably use those on this. Then we got white bucktail too. Plenty of it. This is like a demented one, but I got a nice little clump off of it, so we're going to use that bucktail. And then we have a couple different types of feathers, but I'm going to match the ones that Larry used. Which are... I think this is a... Uh, I think it's a, a cape, a rooster cape, I believe. I'm not sure. Let's see. Rip a couple longer ones off. Yes, that's nice. Yes. It's not that nice, but it's fine. That's good. I think he used four, so I'm going to use four. All right. Guess we're tying everything behind here. <clears throat> oh, that's cool. So it does have a, it does have a little uh, soft plastic holder. Usually I just crush those down, but not really any need, I guess. That's the most important tool. Ooh, and this one is done for. Oh man, rest in peace. All right, I know I got some also important trash bucket. All right, I know I got some uh, some other glue right here. 
Here is a freshie. It's a different label, but same glue. I hope. So I bought a couple of them. Let's actually clear that out. Oh, so while we're here, I'll show you some other bucktails that I tied. Just in different, different styles. So this one, typical jetty bucktail. Nothing tied on the shank or anything, so you throw a pork rind on there. Nice and heavy. Bucktail's not too thick, so that's gonna sink well. That, on the other hand, is a lot of bucktail. This one you could probably use in the surf. Probably some bigger surf. Maybe Montauk off the point. Um, that does have stuff tied on the shank. We got feathers and some bucktail. There's a good amount of bucktail too, so it's gonna help with the help with the sink right there. And there's also some flash on that. I don't I don't really love using flash, but I did it there. Sorry, that was my ringtone. Here's a giant squid bucktail. Yeah, so that's gotta be like 16 inches probably. That's nice parody. Hooks all the way up there. And then this one is for, I tied it this October for bigger water, bigger dirty water near an inlet on the sand beach. Um, it's pretty heavy. That's got to be like a two ounce jig, I think. Um, and so since I was using it on a pretty shallow sand beach, we got a good amount of bucktail on there, but we got uh, deer body hair on the front, which is going to help slow down that sink rate. And also it's going to help push water and create more of a head for this. So it's not going to collapse as much. Love that one. I could pet that all day, as you can tell. All right, let's check out this new glue. Good, perfect. Glue those first threads on. Okay, and now I'm just gonna tie it literally the same exact way Larry did. This guy on top, I like the shorter ones. So he faced them outwards versus flipped and facing inwards. And they're all going to face outwards. Oh, yeah. Three, four. Last one goes up top. All right. So his feathers were a little more tame on the hook. I'm guessing the bucktail's gonna do that, so let's just get started on it. I'm probably just gonna use most of this. You can see I kind of like straightened out the tips there a bit before cutting. Grab it towards the top, pull out all those short fibers at the bottom. Got my comb here, very important tool. Help comb out those shorter fibers at the bottom. All right, I could probably encircle the whole bucktail with this clump. Usually I'll tie in a few clumps, just so I don't, you know, clump it all together and make it a lumpy neck. But I've gotten, you know what? I'm not even gonna mess with it. I am going to do a few clumps. I'm gonna do two. And then the third one's gonna be the top. All right, I always want the bucktail a little bit shorter than the feathers.
You can see I'm letting that bucktail overlap over the head a ton, but that's fine. We're going to cut that off eventually. Some more. Make sure it's the same length as the other bucktail. Straighten it out. All right, so one of the one thing I always try to do, and if you want a pretty looking bucktail that works well, you should do this too. I like to make sure all my fibers are coming off of the jig straight. I don't want them coming off like that. They all need to be going out like that. So no matter where the jig head is turning, all the hairs are going to be straight facing that way for the most part. The comb helps with that big time. I'm gonna need more white hair. But yeah, usually use the comb to help you fix that. And then you tie it off towards the front. Not tie it off, but flatten the whole presentation out towards the front. Okay, and get some more white hair. Just cut a clump off there. Pull out the bottom. It's fine, I don't think I need to get crazy with that one. I'm gonna comb it out though, separate all these, uh, all these tips. Good. I'm just going to come across the top with this one. Got some black hairs in there, which I don't usually like to do, but I don't really care much. I'm going to cover them up with uh, yellow hair. Anyway, so it should be fine. Get them in there, hold the thread down, comb that out. And actually, you know what? A little black on the back is never a bad thing. All right, this is starting to look good. A lot of those uh, feathers are getting tamed by the bucktails, you can see. I'm gonna start cutting this hair before I tie too much. Let's pull it out, get clumps, cut them close as I can. As close to the base as possible. In the end, we'll just tie over all those, uh, those cut ends. If it becomes a pain, which it's really not, I got the razor here too. Oh, there it is, got this guy, so it's coming. Clean her up. Don't really need to do this, but I'm just showing you. And that's fine. Start tying over those, those ends. Get it looking clean. And then let's just pull it out, see what, see what we're looking at. Okay, okay. Pretty good. Should fish well. Mm. 
might even try and flatten out that those bottom feathers a bit more by adding another extra see that so I just I went just floofed out now go forward tie just over a little bit and look at that just get tamed nice and flat so this was a skinny profile bucktail it was pretty long and very skinny so that's exactly what we're going for this time. I meant to use, I meant to reuse one of those old uh, feathers because it was still good and I forgot. You know what? I'm not. I'm just going to use it for the next one. All right, now we got our yellow. Take it from the top. Some, not much. Just tie it on, see what it looks like. <laughs> looks a lot like the white, but it's a little bit, a little bit of a color change. Just tie that in fine, so I don't have to waste time cutting. I do like that. That's nice. It's a good little accent. Add a little more. Little stragglers off so we have a clean head. Perfect. All right, that's going to be it. Get up here. Add a little bit more. Just even it out. A little bit more on this side, because the other side it goes down to like pretty much halfway down the fish, down the lure. So this side I want it going halfway too. So now we got there there see what I mean it's like half yellow half white basically basically that's what's going on let's comb her out make sure she's all the fibers are going straight there the finishing ah oh man finishing touch there okay that's good that's good so that is going to give us a skinny profile bucktail. Almost identical to the one that Larry gave me. Like I said, if you can find his, here's my whip finisher, whip finishing tool. If you can find these bucktails, North Bar Tackle, buy them. This one's probably half ounce. This was hands down my most productive bucktail this year. It was, oh man, crappy, whatever, that's fine. The glue is the real holder. Stuff dries extremely fast. If 
we use too much it kind of finishes weird or cures weird I'll leave like a white crusty thing on top but if you get like a nice thin layer all the way around should harden just fine yeah so that's pretty similar to what I was fishing and I think it should fish just as just as well tie those fibers in tight you're not going to be able to pull any out ever Yeah, looks good. So I'll just uh, wet it and I'll sh comb it out, blow dry it, and I'll show you what it looks like as a finished product. All right. <clears throat> All right. So I just wet it a bit to show you. That's the size it's going to collapse to as you actively retrieve it through the water. And the feathers, since they're facing outwards, they're going to give a lot of wiggling movement as it goes. And if you just leave it sitting, it'll probably expand a little bit to like that. Then you pull it again through the water and it gets to that skinny kind of spearing like shape, right? It's actually got that color too. That the kind of cream yellow color is perfect for a spearing. All right. So there's the fly. That's best fly of 2021 sure it's going to be the best one of 2022 as well. Good luck.